Hey foodies, did you know that sugar could actually be good for you? In this episode, we are speaking to CEO and founder of Air Loma, Hastino Mitchell, who is going to tell you all about sugar and being stuck due to COVID-19. Make sure you tune in to this episode of There's Food in the House. Ooh, if it's lit, then I'm signing up. I just knock them down, Adrian can line them up. If you search for real talk, then you're finding us. Thanks for reminding us, ain't no wild shining up, it's different. I know you're feeling something missing. Them shows only talk, they don't listen. You need something warm, like a hot meal from the south. Like a summer rain in a drought. Some real talk that can make a nigga proud. Thoughts out loud, we ain't doing it for the clout. That food for the soul, gotta take a different route. You don't need nothing fast, we got food at the house. I'm just saying though. We get food at the house. Yeah, we get food at the house. Hey, everybody, it's your girl, Adrienne, the PR Diva. We are coming to you live from There's Food in the House. You know, this is the podcast where you don't have to look for anything else. You don't have to pick up anything else because we have food in the house. And speaking of food, we have Hastino Mitchell. He is the president and founder of Aeroloma. And it's going to be, for this call, everybody, we're dealing with accents. So there are going to be a lot of words that I probably get wrong. I may pronounce his name wrong, but we're going to fix it. So, Hastino, welcome to There's Food in the House. Awesome. Thank you for your time, and I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about Aeroloma. Tell us about you, and then we're going to get into this fascinating story that COVID-19 has created. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'll give a little bit of context. So I'm originally from Philadelphia. I lived there with my family. I had my, my son, who's two, and my daughter, who's four, and my wife. And um, for the last few years, I've been working on developing Air Loma. Um, and that was specifically working with indigenous tribes in remote indigenous uh, ancestral territories in Colombia to help market globally their unrefined hand harvested cane sugars. Uh, they are working with uh, 12 different varietals of sugarcane. And when sugarcane is not refined, it has flavor nuances and delicacies depending on altitude, uh, similar to even an approach that a coffee would have or a fine wine. Um, so when you don't refine it, you're able to explore all of those nuances depending on the varietal altitude, seasons, et cetera. Um, so we came down here before uh, coronavirus uh, became international, and right. we now are coronavirus refugees here. Uh, uh, thankfully, I'm with my entire family, but uh, we kind of say at this point we're we're triple quarantine. We're quarantined in an indigenous territory high on the mountains on our pot of land, which is a, a, a nice sized farm, living with the tribal chief, which is, is great. So they're giving us shelter. The mountain range that we're on, being that is, is ancestral, the indigenous have shut it off uh, for all visitors coming in and out. So mm. totally locked off entrance roads. Um, and then of course, all flights back to the States were uh, and have been totally canceled. So, so that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm with my family, but it gives us an incredible opportunity to live with the indigenous and really to learn about their their practices, uh, their agricultural practices, their religious rights, um, you know, how they coexist with the land. And, and then also gives us now ability to extend at our offerings to a, a range of naturally derived organic regenerative agricultural pro crops, such as their green Colombian coffee, there are raw varietals of cacao. So even for cacao and chocolate producers, there's about 12, or sorry, 13 different varietals of cacao they have as well. Uh, and then it goes, cacao to, is, it goes to honey and all that stuff as well. So honey and, and sugar and all, all the great stuff. So I was saying, tell us what cacao is. Like for those who don't, yeah. what, what is cacao? Absolutely, absolutely. So I'll, I'll explain the ways I explained it to my four-year-old daughter. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I said, we that need that. Sugar? See that tree right there? She's like, yes, Poppy. I'm like, that's a chocolate tree. And she goes, I want that. <laughs> um, so, so what cacao is, is it, it's a pod. It's about six inches big. Uh, they vary in uh, colors. Some can be like bright yellow, some can be bright red or a deep, beautiful purple. Um, but you take the seeds out. What you do is you ferment the seeds in the same process you would do for coffee, but then you also will roast it like a coffee. Uh, the roasting process turns this seed into like acidic, sort of bitter, but slightly chocolatey flavor. When you make a chocolate bar, you just grind that down and add sugar and it's chocolate. So it is 
it is when it says 80% cacao and 20% sugar, it's 80% this ground seed okay. and 20% of sugar. Hopefully they're using Aria Loma sugar, but uh, <laughs> it's sugar at this point. <laughs> Which is so funny because for us, us meaning society, we look at sugar and we see sugar. You know, it's like, okay, it might be granulated or it may be pure cane or, you know, something like that. But you're talking about like different flavor essence and, and different le levels of sugar. Like that's just so interesting to me. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, a reapproach to understanding sugar. When we say sugar now, you know, we think A, bad things, you know, empty calories, mm -hmm. it's just a sweetener and it's not good for us, right? right. Um, or I just really like sweet things, right? So even though we think yeah. all of that stuff, we all really like ice cream. We have a palate for it and we want to sweet things naturally, especially as Americans, um, right. you know, we're, we're, we gravitate to it. And so I like to explain sugar as sort of uh, the, the lowest common denominator. It is reducing something which is a complex naturally derived product coming from sugarcane. So once again, sugarcane looks like a grass, but it can be like two inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, you harvest that, you press it, and you boil the juice to be able to make sugar. You refine it to make your white sugar, but our sugar is a totally natural process. Um, mm -hmm. But the really the shift is, is that in not refining it, we're not reducing it just to its sweetness. And we're saying, okay, we're going to have it pressed and then naturally dehydrated and not remove anything. And we're going to boil it underneath of 180 degrees. By doing that, it's still technically under the raw level. It's hot enough to dehydrate, but not hot enough to kill the nutrients. So it still has potassium, vitamin C, vitamin A, zinc in it. So it is considered, you know, a raw, healthy, uh, nutritious cane sugar in, in that sense. And when you also separate the idea that sugar is just a sweetener, or kind of like vodka is just an alcohol without flavor and you have to mix it hey. with stuff, all right? <laughs> um, so when you think about like Aroloma sugar, it really is, a, it's, it's a creative process of really exploring flavor note, right? So one varietal, from a particular attitude and, and harvest season might taste more like dried berries and apricots, where another one might taste like, you know, wet, moist brownies. And another one might taste, I, have, I tasted one that tasted exactly like honey. Like you just taste it like, no, that's honey. So uh, you, you start to understand that you, you're not just choosing this because it is sweetening something, but you're starting to choose it because you're on like, okay, this would, this would be an interesting complexity that's a subtle background because it's not sharp sweet like a white sugar. It's mm -hmm. um, a neutral sweet. So it adds sweetness of a sort of fruit, but without overwhelming what it is, it just adds complexity to stuff. Um, I always say with coffee, I'm, I'm a coffee enthusiast. Explain it, okay. let me know if I'm talking too much as well. No, no. Um, okay, so as, as a coffee enthusiast, you know, I, I, this is where it started with the project for me. People don't use sugar because the sharp white sugar overwhelms the natural nuances of the coffee, right? All you do is taste like this sharp sweetness, no matter how much you put in there, it's, it's like it overwhelms the palate of the coffee. Um, so people are either way for it or way against it. You know? I'm laughing because I just had this conversation with someone about, not about coffee specifically, but about sweetening. So I was having yeah. a conversation with them about smoothies and how you have to really learn and gauge levels with smoothies because for, Kale for me, kale and blueberries are really tough because like you have to make sure you have the right combination. And so I was laughing because I told her the first time that I tried to make a smoothie with blueberries, I was having a tough time. And for me, I felt like I needed more sugar because the <laughs> blueberries were so bitter. And I was like, by the time I finished, I had to throw it away because it was still just tasting like a overly super sweet nasty blueberry <laughs> <laughs> and it happens it happens <laughs> and so for you to say i mean first and foremost like you're telling us that sugar can be good for you like you're sure but have nutrients because everybody else yeah. like you said empty calories don't use sugar so for you to say okay not only can we get nutrients from sugar but we can also use these flavonoids and these this different level to get different tastes. So that's really interesting. And in, in Colombia, it's legally considered a food. 
because it is really because it is nutrient rich so you know even here when we're like going into the mountains you know the indigenous will pull out a bag of like we didn't eat lunch they'll pull out a bag and we'll eat it and and it, it doesn't give you a, a sugar spike and you just kind of get a little uh, you know energy in, and enables you to keep going so um, it's substantial in that way. That's so and delicious. So and as I said, <laughs> so when, when you put in when you put in the coffee, what's interesting is because it's not refined. What you'll find is that it will add. Uh, sorry, it will it will decrease the bitterness and the acidity in a coffee, but it will highlight the fruitness of the fruit forwardness of the coffee, but without overwhelming it. So you'll have somebody who doesn't normally use sugar in their coffee, mm -hmm. and you'll put it in there. And it would just provide nuance where you're going like, is there sugar in there? Is there not sugar? Or is it just like really complex and delicious coffee? Uh, of course, you can add more to make it sweet <laughs> if you wanted. Um, but that's sort of the, the scale depending on what you're looking for. That's so interesting. So when you all headed to Colombia, luckily, like you said, you had your family with you. But were you? how long were you actually prepared to stay? So how's that been to be essentially oh. There. there yeah so my my wife was planning on staying well my first my wife and kids weren't going to come at all i was just mm -hmm. coming here to because we were going to be uh finalizing the packaging of 22 tons which was coming up to our distribution center uh outside of new york so i was coming up here i i didn't actually have a return ticket i was coming up here and i was thinking it was gonna be like two months but i didn't know okay. i planned on a, a large scale of saying maybe it'll be two and a half months and then i'll go back <laughs> okay. my wife bought a ticket with the kids for one month to go back um mm. and now we're at a point where i we're staying here um, <laughs> <laughs> Question mark, um like. <laughs> yeah we're kind of staying here um I, we're saying like a year and then we're saying two and then we're going like well cartagena colombia is kind of beautiful and coast and like well, that would be nice. But I guess I should mention as well that my wife is Colombian. Okay. Uh, and I was going to ask but, that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and we've been together for 13 years. Um, oh, nice. So, yeah, that, that was sort of my introduction to this world and uh, which, which makes, has, makes this a little bit more sense. Um, plus, both of my children are 100% fluent in Spanish, in understanding and speaking. So it makes all of that easier where my kids aren't lost, my wife isn't lost. Like, you know, I'm the one that's trying to figure out how to speak here. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to ask those things because I was definitely going to ask how your wife and your children were adjusting. But yeah, so you're the outsider. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> but but there is a big adjustment because, you know, we, we are the, the couple that lived in Center City, Philadelphia. You know, oh. and and we were the ones that people were like when are you moving the suburbs we're like we're never moving the suburbs we're, mm. you know, we're we're staying in the center of the city and that's it and you know we're city people and wow. here we are totally in the jungles of colombia you know with chickens and growing our own food and, you know, we just planted uh, more potatoes yesterday and we have an herb garden and nice. um yeah i have a dog <laughs> 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 So, so we're, so, we're totally learning different. and connecting with the land in every possible way. Uh, since since I've been here, um, I was stung by a scorpion after uh, <gasps> the, the first month. Um, me and my wife actually just recovered from dengue fever, so that that was a, a whole. That sounds uh, bad. What is that? What? How, what is it? Anything dengue, fever and it can't be good. <laughs> oh, it's not good. Dengue fever is not good. Um, so dengue fever it can kill you, but what it is is uh, it's a mosquito-borne tropical disease. Like, I think it's it's all it's a canner. It's the same as yellow fever as well. Oh. Um, so, but it, I would explain it as it's a a bone breaking fever that can lead to like organ failure. But you know, it's just it's the worst fever that you could ever imagine and you know what what it is they did a, for me they did a lot of like rinsing rituals there are no hospitals or doctors up here so oh, wow. the, the mamo uh that we live with is uh he's the spiritual leader and the tribal chief and he's the medicine man so he went into mm. the he said don't you worry i'll be back and he he left for like two hours and came back with like a bunch of like branches of stuff and boiled them and said, drink this. And we said, yes, of course. That is so, like, it's just interesting. Uh, this, your life right now is something out of a movie, you know, it's like, I, like most times it may be somebody that was in a plane crash or something, they get stranded in, 
in the mountains in the middle of the wilderness and no one's around. So how has the tribe, like, had you been engaged with this tribe prior to this stay? Obviously, you, yes. I, I assume you've done some business with them. But yeah. how has that been to, to be with this tribe and living with them? So I've been engaged with this tribe now for several years years, maybe three years. When I first um, found out about them being as, uh, they were calling themselves online, that there was an interview, that they were the, the gatekeepers of biodiversity. And at that point for my sugar company, I was looking to, to work with somebody who's making pure cane sugar that had access to varieties and, you know, can nature and, and nurture that process. So I engaged with them and we've been in communication all this time. Most of the time has been with me working with them on getting USDA certified, establishing a packaging facility that is sanitary, that's Envima certified, that's fair trade. So the process and the paperwork uh, quite frankly, it took years. But now we're certified in Europe, certified in US, uh, in Colombia. We have the facility up, totally ready, both in production and in packaging. And this was sort of like the home run. Now I'm like, I'm just going home and I'm, we're just going to do it now. Like, that's, I'm just coming here to do it. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's what it is. I came here to, to just package it and make sure that it went through customs appropriately. And that's where the, the past sort of deviates. But in, a, in the most beautiful way, uh, by me being here and being intimately involved with the knowledge and the process of growing and the harvesting and like really all the nuanced details that goes into like the, the products, like how do you grow this thing in a sustainable manner? I am now effectively like, you know, uh, like uh, a cane sommelier, you know, working <laughs> as a partnership with them. They're going like, well, we're growing this this way because of this. I'm like, well, what about this? You know, this is, this, what about this cane? Um, and I give an example of that because there's, there's so many, there's more than 12 varieties of, of cane. But what happens is that the, even the tribe is growing it based on production and volume. Like what can we sell? What will people buy? If you can grow a cane that grows 10 feet tall, why would you grow a cane that only grows five feet tall? Right? You're going to get a lot. It's the same plot of land, but you'll get twice the amount of sugar from it. So I'm coming in and saying, yes, you get more from that one, but this one tastes fantastic and nobody else has it. Cause I'm not selling for sweetness only I'm selling for flavor and complexity. Right? So I'm now going to them and saying, I will buy that one for twice as much money and I will sell that. And now I'm, I'm now, now they're planting more of varieties that they, that they weren't planting much of before. So in that way, I'm now acting as, um, you know, preservation uh, of biodiversity and, and, you know, these rare strains of uh, cane sugar that aren't being harvested or, or grown in any degree of volume now are starting to be. This is so, I'm sure this is going to be such a random question because, yeah. uh, you know, I okay. am... From Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised, live in Georgia now, and am not an outside person at all. Nothing about me says Adrian sleep under the stars. <laughs> you should come visit. <laughs> uh, so my question is, I know you said there's no hospitals and everything. So when you say you have your plant up and ready, and I'm, I'm trying to picture this, like I'm trying, I know you're in the mountains. So how does your plant look? Is it like for us, like city people who are traditionally looking like, you know, sterile walls and, and big buildings, but I, you are, like you said, in the mountains. So how does that look? How do you build a plant that does that? Absolutely. So we were able to build a facility that fills all the images you have of what a production facility would need to look like. Hmm. Um, that That's what we had to do. The majority of houses up here are made, um, the the indigenous believe that they are, are on an idea that they coexist with the land. So right. they don't bring farm materials in. You know, it is literally about taking the, the land from around there and building a clay house and using the wood. So it's all natural materials. Um, there also is a practical side to that um, because of our altitude. You know, we're ranging from a, a thousand, a thousand meters above sea level all the way up to like, I think it's like 8,000. Um, so last night we had an incredible rainstorm, but I've never experienced rain and thunder like that. We are so high 
that it right. felt like we were in the clouds and that the thunder was just there. Right. So I can not they imagine say that the sounds are alive with electricity is what they say. So you don't really want a metal roof. Like, you right. know, if you oh, can yeah. have like a wooden clay house, like you're safer. <laughs> okay. Um, that makes so sense. with that, we needed to be cautious of how uh, lightning works as well to make sure that our facility is not attracting lightning. So that's another, another thing, but yes, our facility is a uh, totally up to par or across the board and that, that planning was indeed a process. Um, but we have worked together and, and done some really great things together. So, um, and just yesterday I had a meeting with the tribal chief and two of the elders, and we are planning on a, a new facility actually that will happen hopefully in the next year based on our projected volumes and diversity of products right now. Uh, the facility that we built right now is primarily just for uh, the cane sugar, but the new facility will be uh, a new uh, processing for all the green coffee, all the raw cacao um, and some of the honey packaging. And then with the, the cacao, so that will be sold as ground cacao and cacao nib. So if you're making smoothies, you can throw that in as, you know, a superfood, something like okay. that. My favorite way of doing it is like, it is chocolate. So I actually take the cacao powder and I throw in some of my sugar and then um, I put it with a little bit of water in the stove and I stir it for five minutes and it's a liquid chocolate and it's just killer awesome so oh, that sounds I'm like using it. that right now for like my coffee sometimes in the morning it's delicious so is your product and i know we're we're running out of time but last question is your product because your, your product sounds expensive <laughs> so what is your, you know because i'm looking at it because like you are organic you know like people may slap organic on a package and you know like we just don't necessarily know where it came from or, or what processes it went through to get the organic label but you are obviously literally and, and figuratively organic so how how do you are you selling it as a gourmet product is it that um is it individual packaging or is it just wholesale or how do people get your so we're, so we're doing both uh we we specifically do not sell to end consumers. So um, at our distribution center, we will sell cases. Uh, there'll be cases of three quarter pound bags. Uh, those three quarter pound bags will be sold to grocery stores. They'll be sold on Amazon. They'll be sold to online, you know, grocers and distributors, that sort of thing. Uh, the suggested retail price for a three quarter pound bag is six, or sorry, five ninety nine. So um, we think we're coming in at a very competitive price. It is more than domino, um, but that we feel that that is an approachable price uh, for right. the quality of product that you're getting. Um, other than that, we do sell a kilo pound uh, bags. There's about two and a half pounds. Those are sold in the case as well, but think restaurants, think chocolate makers, think bakeries, pastry chefs, um, breweries, um, or just an individual at home that wants really, you know, like eight kilos of sugar, you can get that too. Uh, I, I don't judge you. <laughs> right. So uh, this is my, my final question for real. Is sugar what you thought you were going to be when you grew up? Did you like, when you, <laughs> Castino, as a child, was like, I'm going to sell sugar. <laughs> of course it is. I mean, no, I mean, um, I've always dreamt that I was sweet. My mom told me, you know. Um, <laughs> I believe her. <laughs> um, no, no, not at all. Um, you know, I, I was an architect. I have a master's okay. in uh, architectural design. And, you know, I, I'm a, an avid proponent of life as an evolution and that um, you take the opportunities as they're handed to you, um, but they only present themselves if you're open to them. So um, I came here the first time and just the first time I tasted this sugar, um, it was kind of like, wow, this is like, this is a whole new world. This mm -hmm. changes everything that I know about sugar and it doesn't exist in the States. And um, this is about nine years after that first thought. Here I am continuing pushing that forward. Of course, there was many, many doubts along the way. I've gone like, is America ready for this? Am I the one to do this? You know, am I knowledgeable enough? Like, do I have the time? Do I have the capacity? Do I have the money? And I answered all those questions over years of persistence. And, you know, every time I said, like, I'm sure. And then I'm going like, yeah, man, I, I'm the sugar man. This is, I, <laughs> I want to be in sugar and I want to be insanely knowledgeable about it and know everything I can. And I'm willing to, you know, live with the indigenous with my wife to learn more and kids and, um, and do this. So uh, I'm, I'm totally in and it's, it's a, a long drawn process to get to here. And 
Um, I always say it's not about it's not about the destination, it's about the process. I'm infinitely fascinated and curious to learn every day and to grow what it is that I'm doing. It's not about arriving. It's about entrepreneurship is what I do. And this is, this is my passion. So I love it. This has been absolutely amazing. I appreciate your time. This conversation. I'm just, I, you know, I, I know sugar now. I can't say I'm the sugar woman. <laughs> Hey, I'm a sugar mama, but no, I can't say that, but you know, I appreciate this. So tell everyone how they can find you, how they can get more information Absolutely. and and what they need to know. First thing I say, like everyone, please, please, please uh, follow us on air Loma dot or air Loma on Instagram. So at air Loma, H E I R L O M A. It's like air Loma, but like a slight, slight deviation on it. <laughs> Um, website is airloma.com. That will be the retail end of things. So if you're on the East Coast anywhere, uh, you will be able to purchase cases of that when our products arrive. So if you follow Airloma, you'll know when our products have arrived on the East Coast. Other than that, our Alibaba site will be up in the next few weeks. That will enable anybody who's out there who is a bulk producer and could use anything from 200 kilos to, I won't judge, 22 tons. <laughs> Um, you can do you. <laughs> yeah, hey, I got it. Um, you, you can get that directly on Alibaba. We will make it fresh. You'll select your varietal, um, and I can ship it to you directly uh, through our logistics manager and get it to you anywhere across the globe. We're getting uh, inquiries everywhere from uh, Germany and Russia and Australia. So we're we're going global on our exportations through Alibaba. This is so awesome, Hastino. Thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us for There's Food in the House. We'll see you guys next time. All right, much love. We got food at the house. Yeah, we got food at the house. Yeah, we got food at the house. You don't need nothing fast. Gotta take a different route. Yeah, we be lit. We ain't never gonna switch. We lit. We ain't never gonna switch. We lit. We ain't never gonna switch. If it's made for the real, it's forever gonna fit. We lit. We ain't never gonna switch.